Assistant Secretary of Scottish CND, David Mackenzie. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Good Thank to be you. Here. Thanks. So let's start with the UN situation that, as you know, UN member states signed the Genoa Convention to prohibit the use of chemical weapons and to consider them as a war crime. However, why does the United Nations remain silent about the chemical weapons used against the Kurds despite the old claims and, and evidences on this issue? Yeah, there's a... I don't have the absolute facts to hand, but there seems to be, at least on the face of it, very real uh, evidence that chemical weapons have been used, and I, I would accept that. Uh, as to why there is an international action on it, one can only stab at a guess or two. One of the big uh, issues in the background here is NATO, and Turkey as a NATO state. Uh, bit of a rogue NATO state, but regarded as a member of the NATO alliance and therefore a, probably escaping a lot of criticism as a result. And that's a real problem we have with NATO and with Turkey, obviously. Thank you. IPPNW and OPCW are related and they are, uh, they are organizations that work in the United Nations, as you know. Do you think there can or should be independent observers sent to the Kurdish region or samples from the region sent elsewhere uh, for analysis in the laboratories? What is your suggestion? What is your call to these institutions? Well, it's interesting to hear the call from IPPNW, who are a very reputable organization, and they, they're very much involved in the anti-nuclear movement as well, as you probably know and were very key to developing the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Uh, and I'm just making that connection because, uh, like the Chemical Convention, Chemical Warfare Convention, there are still some states which haven't signed the TPNW and the Chemical Convention. So it requires a lot of international pressure. Uh, and uh, yes, certainly there should be independent observers there and samples should be taken, it should be taken seriously. And it's obviously not being taken seriously at the moment. And just a quick question, if there was an independent delegation, would you be, uh, would you be like to join some delegation like that to go to the region and uh, uh, make researches at the region? I doubt within Scottish CND that we've got the expertise for that. And uh, obviously it was something I would have to ask my colleagues about as well. But I mean, I think uh, you want people with the expertise in that area uh, to do this work. Thank you. So would you help to the Kurdish community to send their the expertise then? Let me ask in, in that way. Yeah, I see you're saying, yeah. Uh, well, the, the little bit that we can do, we will do. And uh, as you know, our main focus is on nuclear weapons uh, in the UK, but uh, we do pay attention to other issues that are connected to it. And there's a very strong connection between uh, nuclear weapons, obviously, and chemical weapons as weapons of mass destruction. And certainly what little moral force we can add. We're a very small organisation, Scotty C&D, but what little moral force we can add, I'm sure we'd be happy to. Thank you. In front of the whole world, uh, if you remember, the Turkish state both carried chemical weapons to the ISIS gangs in Rojava and used these weapons in their attempt to invade northern East Syria as well. What action can be taken against the Turkish state in the international arena? Yeah, I would uh, have to say I, it's not the, the Syrian aspect is not something I know a lot about. But again, the same principles will apply. There should be international investigation of these. And if the war crimes are proved, then the people who are at the back of them have to be brought to account. Kurdish fighters share images of Turkish written ammonium nitrate containing bombs and photos showing wounds on the bodies of various fighters and civilians' bodies as well. Isn't the use of ammonium nitrate and white phosphorus as a as a weapon illegal? Absolutely, and uh, white phosphorus is something that's been used by a number of forces in in the Middle East in the past, and it is absolutely 
absolutely unacceptable. And uh, what happens with military forces is they're always looking for weapons that suit them and paying little attention to international law. And I think we ho all hope we're looking forward to the day when the international law that underpins these conventions is, is actually taken seriously. Lastly, international forces entered Iraq in 2003 under the pretext of chemical weapons. Why don't the same international powers even take a step against the Turkish state use of chemical weapons today? Well, I think the answer is, first of all, that it was a completely deceitful reason for the Iraq war. And it was lies were told by British and US governments in particular about the chemical weapons uh, at that time. Although there was certainly the background of uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, especially at Halabja, using chemical weapons. But uh, the Western powers act according to their own interests. Uh, they will be supporting international law if it suits them, but if it doesn't suit them, they won't support it. That's the position we're in. And I think in, in the people who are in these Western countries like myself in the UK and in Scotland, we've got to do what we can to apply pressure on the governments to actually take these things seriously. And it's a very hard struggle to do so. Dear David Mackenzie, Assistant Secretary of Scottish CND, thanks for joining us. Thank you for well, your valuable comments today. I hope that's been helpful. Thank you.